An educational project to reintroduce sacred Lakota songs and make them more accessible to a new generation of singers is set to be unveiled this weekend at the United Tribes Technical College International Pow Wow in Bismarck. It's called the Dinsmore Lakota Song Repatriation Project. Recordings of Standing Rock tribal members from 110 years ago have been remastered and will be reintroduced in an innovative multi-platform format. Josh Minnie spoke to the owner of a Bismarck recording studio who helps Standing Rock educators breathe new life into these sacred Lakota songs recorded more than a century ago. Famed American anthropologist and ethnographer Francis Densmore recorded around 260 Lakota songs on the Standing Rock Reservation between 1911 and 1915. The root of the project to revisit these century-old recordings started in the early 1990s when renowned Standing Rock hoop dancer and musician Kevin Locke saw the value in modernizing them. I think in any indigenous North American culture, uh, the music is the most is the preeminent art form. That's what the Densmore documented, that vocal tradition, which is the is the foundation of everything. Locke brought cassettes of Densmore's recordings to David Swenson of Makoche Studios in Bismarck. And on these cassette tapes were these old, worn out, scratchy recordings of singers that had been recorded at Standing Rock beginning in 1911. Locke asked Swenson to improve them. Here's when things got interesting. I remember going over to the studio one night and listening to a song and at the end there was a trill that la 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 you know only it didn't sound like a trill like it should like la 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 it sounded like la 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 a light bulb went off Swenson immediately realized the recordings were at the wrong speed you know naive me I thought this was a great discovery and I'd go to the Smithsonian and they'd say oh good work well they didn't really they were sort of resistant um, because it represented a major flaw in their in their cataloging. Swenson speed corrected, restored, cataloged, and matched the songs to Densmore's book documenting the songs, which is now an ebook. So now, say a young Lakota singer who wants to learn these songs can sit down with this ebook and with the recordings and match them up and go through and learn them. And that was never possible before. Then the project took on a whole new life. Hey, hey, hey. They re-recorded the songs. The revitalization phase of the project received a major grant from the Bush Foundation, more than $200,000. Primary Make cultural sure advisor and co-producer Courtney song. Yellowfat selected young Lakota singers to re-record the songs and involved tribal elders to capture the cultural context of the songs. That's one thing I wanted to get from my singers that sing on this project is they show a respect to the song. When they show a respect to the song, they show respect to those men and women that kept these songs. United Tribes Technical College and Sitting Bull College are getting interactive touch screens that package all the songs, interviews, and re-recordings. For KX News, I'm Josh Many. The Dinsmore Lakota Song Repatriation Project will be presented at 4 p.m. Saturday at United Tribes Technical College. Hundreds of flash drives will be distributed to the public. For more information on the event and for a link to the official open source website for the project, Find this story on our website, kxnet.com.